Before you listen, if you enjoy the stories and want to hear more, then please consider subscribing. Most of you listening aren't subscribed, so please take this time to subscribe. Turn on notifications so you'll never miss a story and be the first to hear. You'll also be supporting me. Thank you. It was late summer, and my friends and I decided to embark on an adventure. We planned a road trip in a caravan. The plan was simple, drive across the country, exploring the great outdoors, and seeing the hidden gems that lie off the beaten path. It was going to be the trip of a lifetime. Little did we know that it would turn into a bone-chilling encounter that we would never forget. We set off early in the morning, excited and ready for the open road. The caravan was stocked with all the essentials, food, water, clothes, and camping gear. The first few days were nothing short of amazing. We explored national parks, hiked trails, and enjoyed the beauty of nature. We discovered breathtaking vistas and stumbled upon enchanting little towns filled with warm, welcoming people. We marveled at the variety of landscapes, from dense forests to rolling plains and rugged mountains. It was during the second week of our journey that things took a turn for the worse. We had been driving for hours on a desolate stretch of road, miles away from any sign of civilization. The sun had just set, painting the sky a brilliant canvas of oranges, pinks, and purples. We decided to stop for the night and found the seemingly perfect spot for our caravan. It was a small clearing, just off the main road, surrounded by tall trees that swayed gently in the evening breeze. As we settled in, I felt a little odd and scratchy. There was something about the spot that seemed weird. The air was heavy and the silence was almost deafening. I tried to simply ignore it, chalking it up to my overactive imagination. We spent the evening playing cards and swapping stories by the campfire. We shared tales of our past adventures, jokes, and even some ghost stories, trying to keep the atmosphere light despite the nagging feeling of dread that lingered in the air. As the night wore on, I couldn't help but notice that the uneasiness I had felt earlier hadn't dissipated. My friends seemed to be feeling it too, though none of us mentioned it. Eventually, we called it a night and retreated to the caravan. I lay in my bunk, listening to the sound of the wind rustling the leaves outside, trying to convince myself that everything was fine. But the feeling of dread only grew stronger. Sometime around midnight, I was jolted awake by a sudden loud bang on the side of the caravan. My heart leaped into my throat, and I lay there, frozen in fear. The sound came again, louder this time as if someone or something was pounding on the walls with a force I couldn't comprehend. I didn't dare to move or make a sound. I could hear my friends stirring in their bunks, their breaths shallow and panicked. The bane continued, relentless and terrifying. It felt as though the caravan would be torn apart at any moment. I summoned the courage to peek through the window, but all I could see was darkness. The moon had disappeared behind a thick layer of clouds, casting an eerie, impenetrable blackness over the clearing. Despite the darkness, I strained my eyes, trying to make out any shapes or movements that could explain the horrifying noises. As my eyes adjusted, I could vaguely discern the outline of an enormous, hulking figure lurking just beyond the edge of the clearing. It seemed to be watching us, waiting as if deciding what to do next. My blood ran cold, and I quickly pulled the curtain closed, my heart pounding in my chest. The banging stopped as abruptly as it had begun, leaving us in a state of terrified silence. We lay there hearts pounding, unsure of what to do next. No one wanted to be the first to venture outside. We whispered amongst ourselves, discussing what we should do. Should we stay put and hope for the best, or should we try to leave immediately? Ultimately, we decided to wait until daylight, hoping that whatever was lurking in the darkness would be gone by then. We spent the rest of the night in a state of fearful vigilance, waiting for the sound to return, but it never did. As the first light of dawn began to break through the darkness, we cautiously stepped outside the caravan. The sight that waited us was enough to send chills down my spine. The entire area surrounding the caravan was trash, as if a tornado had ripped through it. Trees were uprooted, branches were strewn everywhere, and deep gouges marred the earth. But the most horrifying sight of all was the caravan itself. The walls were covered in deep, jagged scratches and dents, as if some monstrous creature had tried to tear its way inside. The damage was extensive, and it was a miracle that the caravan was still intact. We wasted no time in packing up and leaving that cursed clearing. As we drove away, 
I couldn't help but steal one last glance at the devastation left in our wake. It was a sobering reminder of just how close we had come to something truly malevolent. Our once carefree adventure had turned into a nightmare, and we couldn't wait to get back to the safety of our homes. As we neared the end of our journey, we found ourselves reluctant to discuss the incident. It was as if talking about it would make it all the more real, and we wanted nothing more than to forget. But forgetting proved to be impossible. The scars left by that night were not just physical but mental as well. Sleep became elusive, filled with nightmares of the unknown force that had come for us in the darkness. We tried to go back to our normal lives, but the experience had changed us. The world seemed a little darker, a little less safe. The unspoken bond between us grew stronger, forged by the sheer trauma that we had survived. As time went on, we tried to piece together what had happened. We researched local legends and folklore, trying to find any explanation for the terrifying encounter we had experienced. We came across tales of cryptids and supernatural beings, but nothing seemed to quite fit the description of the monstrous figure we had seen lurking in the darkness. We even contacted local authorities, who were skeptical but took our report nonetheless. They investigated the area where the incident had occurred but found nothing out of the ordinary, save for the lingering signs of destruction we had left behind. Years have passed since that fateful night, and the memory has started to fade. But every now and then, when the wind rustles the leaves and the shadows grow long, I'm reminded of the terror that gripped us in that isolated clearing. Oh yes, it was finally summer break, and my friend and I were excited to finally have the chance to go on a much needed road trip. We had been planning this getaway for months, and the thought of leaving our mundane routines behind was exhilarating. We decided to rent a caravan for the journey, as it would provide us with the freedom to explore and camp wherever we desired. Little did we know our adventure would take a terrifying turn that would leave us questioning our decision to embark on this trip. The first few days of our road trip were incredible. We marveled at the breathtaking landscapes, stopped at quirky roadside attractions, and soaked in the picturesque beauty of the countryside. As we drove through winding roads and small towns, the sense of freedom and adventure filled our hearts. We felt alive and invigorated, eager to explore every corner of the vast expanse before us. After a week of non-stop exploration, we decided to slow down and spend a few nights in a remote wooded area we had discovered. It was a serene spot, far from the bustling cities and towns we had passed through. The forest was dense, its towering trees creating a natural canopy that filtered the sunlight, casting a peaceful, dappled glow on the ground below. As the evening fell, we set up our caravan and built a small campfire. We spent hours talking about our experiences, reminiscing about the places we had visited, and sharing our dreams for future adventures. The atmosphere was relaxed and carefree, and we eventually decided to turn in for the night. As we lay in our bunks, the sound of crickets chirping and leaves rustling in the gentle breeze lulled us to sleep, but our peaceful slumber was short-lived. I awoke suddenly, my heart crazily pounding in my chest. There was an overwhelming sense of worry washing over me. It took me a moment to realize that the once calming sounds of the forest had been replaced by an eerie silence. The air felt heavy, charged with an unexplainable tension. Before I could process my surroundings, a sudden flash of light pierced through the darkness. I bolted upright, my heart racing, as I peered out the window. The sight that greeted me was nothing short of terrifying. A group of masked figures stood outside the caravan, their faces obscured by sinister-looking masks. They wielded torches, the flickering flames casting eerie shadows that danced across their concealed features. They moved slowly, deliberately, their footsteps barely making a sound as they approached our temporary sanctuary. My mind raced, trying to make sense of the situation. Who were these people? What did they want with us? I glanced over at my friend, who was now wide awake and staring at me with the same mixture of fear and confusion that I felt. We huddled together, paralyzed by fear, as a group of masked figures continued to close in. We hear their breathing, ragged and labored, just outside the door. Then, without warning, they began knocking on the caravan, the sound echoing through the confined space like a gunshot. My friend and I exchanged a panicked glance, unsure of what to do. Should we open the door and confront the intruders or remain hidden, hoping they would leave us alone? The knocks grew louder, more insistent, as if the masked figures were growing impatient with our hesitation. Despite our terror, we knew that opening the door would be too dangerous. We had no idea who these people were or what they were capable of. So we huddled together, 
praying that they would eventually grow tired of tormenting us and leave. It felt like an eternity, but the knocking finally stopped. We held our breath, listening for any sign of movement outside the caravan. The silence was almost as unnerving as the knocking had been, but after what felt like hours, we began to hear the muffled sound of footsteps slowly retreating. The light from the torches flickered and waned, gradually swallowed by the darkness that surrounded us. We dared not move, our hearts still hammering in our chests, as we waited for any sign that our mysterious tormentors had truly left. The night stretched on, and the tension in the air slowly dissipated. We remained huddled together, too afraid to sleep, fearing that the masked figures would return. As the first light of dawn began to filter through the trees, we cautiously emerged from the caravan, our bodies tense and our senses on high alert. The clearing was littered with the remnants of the previous night's terror. The ground was scuffed and trampled, and the remnants of the torches lay smoldering in the dirt. But there was no sign of the masked figures, no clue as to their identities or intentions. We quickly packed up our belongings, our hands shaking and our minds racing with unanswered questions. It was clear we were being watched, the lingering fear that the masked figures were still out there, waiting for us to let our guard down. As we continued our journey, the once carefree and light-hearted atmosphere had been replaced by a palpable sense of dread. We were constantly looking over our shoulders, jumping at every sound, and second-guessing our decision to camp in isolated locations. We tried to make sense of the terrifying encounter, speculating on who the masked figures could have been. Were they locals trying to scare off unwelcome visitors? or perhaps a group of sadistic thrill-seekers reveling in the terror they had inflicted upon us. The possibilities were endless, and each one was more horrifying than the last. As the days passed and we moved further from the scene of the incident, the fear began to subside ever so slightly. We managed to find a semblance of enjoyment in the remainder of our trip, exploring new places and creating new memories. But the encounter with the masked figures was never far from our minds, casting a shadow over even the brightest moments. When we finally returned home, the relief was palpable. We had survived a harrowing experience and could finally put the nightmare behind us. But despite the comfort and security of our familiar surroundings, the events of that night continued to haunt us. Sleep was often elusive, filled with vivid nightmares of masked faces and flickering torchlight. We had a constant nagging sensation that the mysterious figures were still out there biding their time. In the years since that terrifying night, the memories have begun to fade, but the fear has never completely disappeared. We shared our story with others, always careful to emphasize the importance of vigilance and safety when traveling and camping in unfamiliar territory. Our encounter with the masked figures remains a chilling reminder that there are hidden dangers lurking in the shadows, waiting for the opportunity to strike. We may never know their true intentions or why they chose to terrorize us, but their presence will forever be etched in our minds. It was the holidays I had been dreaming of for months, a time when I could finally escape the daily grind of work and the monotony of my nine to five routine. The idea was to rent a caravan and go on a month long road trip with a few close friends. We had meticulously planned our journey, picking out idyllic locations and exhilarating hiking trails. Excitement bubbled within us as we set off for an adventure that would soon turn into a chilling and unforgettable experience. The first couple of weeks were everything we had hoped for. We explored new places, tried out different cuisines, and forged unforgettable memories. The highlight of our adventure was always the hiking expeditions. There's something magical about walking through the wilderness surrounded by nature's untamed beauty. It instilled in us a sense of freedom and connection with the world that we hadn't experienced in years. One fateful day, we decided to tackle a particularly challenging hike in a remote area. The trail is known for its steep inclines, treacherous terrain, and breathtaking vistas. We were excited and slightly nervous, but eager to take on the challenge. We parked our caravan at the base of the trail and prepared ourselves for the day ahead. The hike was grueling, but the rewards were worth every beat of sweat. We marveled at the panoramic views and reveled in the triumph of conquering the challenging path. As the day wore on, we began our descent, our legs aching, but our spirits high. We couldn't wait to return to the comfort of our caravan, share a hearty meal, and recount the day's adventures. However, as we approached the clearing where we had left our caravan, we could sense that something was amiss. The atmosphere felt heavy, charged with a strange, unsettling energy. 
It was as if the air itself was warning us of the horrors that awaited us. When we finally reached the clearing, our hearts sank and our blood ran cold. Our once cozy and welcoming caravan was a sight of utter devastation. It had been torn to shreds, as though some enormous, malevolent force had ripped through it with a ferocity that defied explanation. The metal frame was twisted and mangled, the roof caved in, and the windows shattered. It was as if a bomb had exploded from within, leaving nothing but a gut-wrenching scene of destruction in its wake. We stood there, frozen in shock and disbelief, as we tried to comprehend what could have possibly caused such devastation. As we surveyed the wreckage, we were speechless that whatever force had wreaked havoc on our caravan was still lurking nearby. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig set our nerves on edge as we nervously scanned the tree line for any signs of movement. Dread settled in the pit of our stomachs as we realized that we were stranded in this remote location with no shelter, no means of communication, and an unknown entity seemingly bent on our destruction. With darkness rapidly approaching, we knew we had to act fast. We quickly gathered what little supplies we could salvage from the remains of the caravan and set off on foot, hoping to find help before nightfall. Our once light-hearted banter was replaced with an oppressive silence, punctuated only by the sound of our labored breathing and the crunch of our footsteps on the forest floor. As we trudged through the wilderness, we were haunted by the knowledge that something was out there, a lurking presence that we could neither see nor understand. It was a relentless, gnawing fear that threatened to consume us as the shadows grew longer and the light faded from the sky. With nightfall upon us and exhaustion weighing us down, we finally stumbled upon a small village. The sight of other human beings and the warm glow of the streetlights was a welcome relief after the day's horrors. We were greeted with concern and kindness by the villagers, who provided us with food, shelter, and a sympathetic ear as we recounted the chilling events that had transpired. As we shared our story, we couldn't help but notice the flicker of recognition and fear in the eyes of our hosts. It seemed that the village had a history of unexplained occurrences and tales of a malevolent force that haunted the surrounding woods. The locals spoke in hushed tones of strange noises in the night, livestock mutilated in inexplicable ways, and sightings of shadowy figures lurking on the fringes of the forest. Despite the warmth and comfort of our temporary refuge, we could not brush at the sense of worry and strong anxiety that had taken root in our minds. Sleep was fitful and played by nightmares of the destroyed caravan, the unseen forest and the eerie sense of being watched. We knew that we could not stay in the village indefinitely, but the thought of venturing back into the wilderness was almost too much to bear. In the days that followed, we managed to arrange transportation back to our homes, leaving the shattered remnants of our caravan and our dreams of adventure behind. We returned to our daily lives. The events of that fateful day haunted us, casting a shadow over even the most mundane of moments. We found ourselves questioning everything we thought we knew about the world and the unseen forces that might lurk just beyond our comprehension. We were left with a lingering sense of vulnerability, a reminder of our own fragility in the face of the unexplained and the unknown. As the years have passed, the memories have begun to fade, but the fear and sense of fear have never completely disappeared. We shared our story with others, hoping that our cautionary tale might serve as a warning to those who seek adventure in the wild and untamed corners of the world. To this day, we still don't know what caused the destruction of our caravan or what force might have been responsible, but the experience has left us with a profound respect for the power and mystery of the natural world, a reminder that there are some things that may forever remain beyond our understanding. Thanks for listening in. If you like these stories and want to hear more, then please subscribe and like and support this new channel. We have more stories for you to listen to.